I'm Barbara Fulton. And where are you from? I'm from Stillwater, but originally from Ohio. And could you tell me about the kind of art you're demonstrating today? Tonight I have my Lucette with me and then all of the different experimentations I've done with it. This is an ancient form. They used to use it in the Viking days. I discovered it as a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism, where we reenacted Middle Ages, and it, I, I've just taken to it. It's, I'm a fidgeter, so it's a wonderful, wonderful method, art form, hand art form, <laughs> to keep my hands busy, and so I'm not sitting around and doing all sorts of fidgeting. What, what do you make with this? Well, it's a, it's a braided cord. Okay, if you'll notice the red here, looks like the cord that might be from a band uniform, you know, like the, the guards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, this is four. Usually the, you just use one. There's like different bamboo cords. I use it for trim. Um, if you look very closely at your hood, it has a cord in it. Yes. You can use this to tie things. In the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. they, t they tied their clothing together with it. They actually laced things with it. They used it as trim. They actually, it's really fascinating, quite frankly. They had buttons, but they didn't sew buttons on. The buttons went through the button holes and then were laced with this behind. Hmm. Can you imagine? Wow. <laughs> So I, I have, um, this, is, this is a design that I've come up with, where the base flares out. It actually is um, very handy. The original ones that I started off on was the, like this. As a beginner, this slides all over you. Because, you know, you kind of have to figure out how you're going to hold it. And, and so, like, for example... You know, we loop over and we hold and we loop over and hold. Notice that I put mine against my, my belly. <laughs> this has a point on it so it stays secure. With the rounded bottom, it was sliding off and then I would lose my project and have to start all over again. I see you even have one made from a fork. I do. I, I, I like lucetting so much. I do other things as well. But I thought, let's, let's see what other mediums will work. You know, so you'll notice I have a fork. You'll notice I have deer antlers. This is one of my favorites because the hand is very nice on it. It fits very nicely in the hand. And um, I have a four prong. Oh, yeah, that, <laughs> that's quite complicated. And getting it started after stopping is kind of a challenge. But what it does is it gives you the same kind of a cord but it, it has stripes on it. You can do a chevron pattern with it. See the chevron? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've made, this is a chevron pattern with a French knot out of it. Um, there was something else I was going to share with you. This is out of shell. It's pointy. I will have to grind down the points because as you can see when I do this, you know, you, you, especially on this side, I use my fingers on those points. So this, this one is hard to handle and hard to use. <laughs> But, a little dangerous. <laughs> uh, yeah, very dangerous. But it is a very enjoyable hand art, and it does does keep it alive. They used it also in the Victorian era to do the the lacy work, like you see on here, the the frogs with the loops. So it you know it 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 still has presence in all of our clothes today. <laughs> uh, do you sell any of this, or is it more for just your own enjoyment? Well, I haven't sold any of my loose set things. I also crochet and sew and do costuming and all sorts of things. I don't tat yet and I don't do bobbin lace yet, but I do about everything else. <laughs> I primarily like to teach and show others how to do that so they can do it for themselves. Great. Well, thank you for talking to us. Oh, thank you. And it's, it's a pleasure to be here.